Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Is Affinity Photo the worst tool for perspective grids? Maybe. Let's talk about that. So in this video, I want to show you how to create perspective grids inside of Affinity Photo. I want to show you easier tools on how to create it outside of Affinity Photo. I want to show you, of course, what kind of perspective types are out there and what they are used for. Actually, let's start with that because you might think, well, I don't really need perspective grids, but think again. They can be used for a lot of reasons. For example, if you want to do photo bashing or create a nice composite, the perspective should line up. If you want to place something inside of a photo, for example, like a car on a street, or if you want to correct the perspective of your photo. Other cases are if you want to do digital painting, if you want to make an isometric design or a vector design or any other kind of design that needs a grid or a perspective grid. Now let's talk about what kind of perspectives are out there. Mainly what is used is what we see here, for example, is the one point perspective, as you can see, all the lines are converging towards the middle, so there is only one perspective point. This here is two-point perspective. As you can see, all of the lines are converging either to the left or the right side of the picture. Now here is a three-point perspective and observe the difference. Here we see the building mainly from the front, while here we are looking up onto a high building from a low point. So not only are the points converging to the left and the right, they are also converging to the middle and this makes this rectangle look a little bit like a part of a pyramid. Here is another very famous form of perspective. It is called isometric. It looks like it is a 3D perspective, but actually none of these lines here are converging. And this means if you would build a whole city out of these buildings, every of the buildings, no matter how close they are to you or far away from you, would have exactly the same size because none of these lines are converging towards each other. This is often used, for example, for maps or for video games or for design, for example, for infographics. So it's really, really cool and looks very pleasing. Okay, let's talk about how to create these grids inside of Affinity Photo. Now, Affinity Photo does have a grid tool. So go to view and then here to show grid. And what you see is this, not very impressive because it's just a very normal standard grid. Observe one important point. The start of the grid is up here. This top left corner is basically zero, zero on the X and Epsilon axis. While when we look at the other end, the grid is ending wherever the canvas is ending, also down here in this corner. So this is very important to understand. Now, of course, we can adjust this grid in multiple ways. Go to view and then to grid and access manager. And here you will find this menu. At first, it looks pretty easy because it's on automatic. And the only thing you can change here is the color and the opacity of your grid lines. But when you go to basic, already you can do some simple adjustments. For example, you can say that these grid lines should be apart, let's say 100 pixels. And then you want to have these subdivisions, let's say four. And this means now these smaller squares here, each of them are exactly 25 pixels high and 25 pixels wide. And to see easier which of them are the smaller ones, you can adjust the opacity or you can even change the color of your subdivision grid. If you want to have them separately, you need to unhook this. And so you can see now I have different colors for my grid lines and for my subdivision lines. Here is the advanced mode. Maybe not touch this, this is more something for experts. You have here different types of grid, for example, isometric, which looks like that, and then two by one isometric, which looks like this, but also something like oblique and other kinds of adjustments. You can also do your custom thing with two axes custom, where you can rotate this here. Now here's a little trick. You can see this jumps in 45 degree steps. Hold your shift key and now click and you can adjust it in individual degree steps. That is a lot better. Now here is something that is easier to adjust and this is this cube. It looks 3D, 
but as you can see for the lines here it is not a perspective in 3d it is an isometric perspective well it's kind of 3d but not the kind of perspective we are used to in for example a photograph what you can do here is you can do a lot of the same adjustments but you also have these sliders here where either you can use these sliders you can see this is from how high or how low we are looking at the cube this is rotating it around its axis and this is doing basically a barrel roll to the side you can also use these adjustments here to do the same thing if you want to have it in that way and this might be a little bit more visually pleasing for you right but like i said these are not 3d in the way that the lines are converging so how are we doing that what you want to do here is a little trick you go down here to the star tool and drag out a star like this now the next thing is you want to set the inner radius to zero percent and the points to as many lines as you want to have don't overdo it because this might crash affinity photo and also set up the line thickness maybe to one point and also the stroke color to something that is easily visible in your picture i selected pink in this case so you can see here now this would give me a one point perspective like this now you might think well you need to keep this star completely round because otherwise this cannot work but actually that is not true because all of these lines are still converging in the middle of the pictures when they cross this corner here of the image now this line is crossing it and now this line is crossing it and as soon as it comes here to this corner of course it has the exact same angle so don't worry about the shape it is still working fine this is one point perspective now when you duplicate this click and drag duplicate that and then of course you need to drag this out uh, so it covers all the image you can create a two point perspective like that you can see like this it doesn't have too many lines uh, for that you can go into your points here and set more of them let's say for example 150 on that side and 150 on this side and you can see now we have more lines and if we zoom into the picture you can see we do have a grid this is a little bit confusing to look at at first but when you start drawing in here you will see that your eyes actually adjust and you will find the lines a lot easier here is also something that might confuse you and that is that these little rectangles here are smaller towards me and then getting bigger towards the horizon and of course the reason why this is happening is because usually the lines would need to get more the closer they get to the horizon but of course this is just a star graphic with a little hack so this is not happening if by the way you want to use this and you want to have three point perspective simply make another one up here and adjust the shape accordingly so you have your lines sometimes you need to have this really really big and really far away to get the lines that you need but you can see right here you could use this for example to draw now a skyscraper in here of course all of this is not very nice and it doesn't look very good and it's a little bit complicated so i found some pages for you and i would really like to see that in affinity photo now I have to admit that even Photoshop doesn't have a grid tool for 3D grids, which is mind boggling because Illustrator does have a very good tool. Photoshop doesn't, but Affinity Photo doesn't either. So here are the pages you can use instead. Let's start with this one because this is visually pleasing and I like things that please me visually. So here you can see we have these three perspective points of convergence right you can turn them on and off when you only have one on you can see we have a one point perspective by the way i want to point out here and this is really important one point perspective does not need to converge in the middle of the image you can go over here and then for example have the side of a road with all the storefronts stuff like that that you're drawing and this would still be one point perspective so don't worry about that you can put it anywhere the red line here is the horizon so of course when you have something where the horizon is very high up 
you see a lot of the ground and this is something you don't want to have this is a classic beginner mistake if for example you start to draw something rather have your horizon lower so you can see more of the scene and everything is perspectively and from the scene a lot more dynamic so put the perspective down where we are used to see it or maybe even a little bit lower so you just have a bigger more impressive scene now you can also do a two-point perspective and in this case we can't rotate the horizon axis but that's okay you can do that in affinity photo but you can move these points around now here is a really really good idea for the design first of all i can move both points because i'm moving the complete canvas by just moving this around but what i can also do is to grab these points here and move the individual points around and the cool thing now observe this genius design when i move to the side of my browser and let go this point snaps back and this means i can push this perspective point really far out and this is something i often need to do especially when i want to draw something and it doesn't have this kind of super skewed uh, perspective in all the elements right so try to move them further out and of course if you want to have a third perspective point you can have this up here and you handle this exactly the same way if you adjusted it exactly in the way you want to simply click on the camera icon here and this will make a screenshot for you and you can either right click and save that or you can right click and copy image and simply paste this into your affinity photo and you can see we have the, all the lines in here really beautiful if you need to adjust something simply go back to the website adjust it and take another screenshot and save another file here right now as you can see here this has the same problem that i had in affinity photo where the boxes are getting bigger towards the horizon because again this doesn't multiply the lines in the way it needs to happen for perspective if you need that here is another tool that does that there is some code up here so i think this is a kind of coding example or something i'm not sure but this is still a very good tool and what you can do here is first of all you can set up the resolution of your image you can see here 1920 by 1080 you can set this to whatever you want now you can also set the square size and the dpi resolution if you want to this angle here moves the points around that is very helpful also what you can do here is adjust the lines now you can see here does this is doing it perspectively correct so these squares are actually getting smaller the closer you come to the horizon but as you can also see this starts to create this kind of dark fog in the background and usually you're not drawing teeny tiny details in your picture so rather only go with as many lines as you actually need to fulfill the job you want to do also you have something here that's called pack and these are basically these grid lines uh, and you can see you can change that here if you are happy with what you did simply click here on download this will create a png file let's push this in here and you can see now that this is transparent so you don't need to have a special blend mode to put this on top of your picture it works out of the box right away just keep this layer on the top and you will have this beautiful grid that you can use for all kinds of purposes and i really hope that affinity photo is integrating something like that some point in the development because i think perspective tools are really important also you might want to watch this tutorial here about how to adjust perspective in a photo with the perspective tool in affinity photo thank you very much for watching and see you soon bye